What's all the hubbub? Let's take a look. Okay, let's work through some of these solutions here and we'll talk about some pros and cons. Now the first one up is the Vera 3. Now I know there is a newer one of this. This one I believe runs the same firmware and the same software on it. So I have given it a pretty good test. Now the Vera, this was a solution I used for quite a while. Now, some pros of this one, I think it's really open. There's a lot of different uh, products that work with it and it has a very good scripting language built into it. Um, I stopped using Vera because I found that the reliability wasn't quite there and sometimes things that seemed to work in one window and in the other window didn't always work as well. So I questioned some of the reliability with it. The other thing that I think was a real negative for Vera is the user interface. So it has a very old school style web interface. They've been working to update it and it has been getting better, but compared to some of the options out there, I just don't think it's up to there yet. The other con for Vera would be the price. I think it was a little bit pricey for what it offers. Um, and I, I just don't know if I obviously haven't even upgraded to the newest hub, I'm sticking with this one. I, I don't know if I would uh, give this one another try uh, unless that price drops a little bit. Every once in a while you can do things to it that seem to lock it up, put a support call in and they'll actually come remotely onto your hub and they will fix it. Support I have has been pretty good in the past but got to a point where I didn't want to try because there was a few times where I actually locked up my hub and it just didn't work for three or four days while I waited for them to come fix it. Good solution, don't know if I would put it on my recommended list. Next one on my list here is the Wink Hub. This is the one that was just purchased by Will I M from uh, Black Eyed Peas. Should be interesting. I know he's had a bunch of technology uh, ventures. Not sure how many of them have been successful, but Wink has definitely been looking for someone to save them. They've had uh, a bit of a rocky business structure over the last little while, um, but it is good to see they're still there. And it's, this is the Wink version one hub. I haven't gone to the second one. Very similar to the Vera. I believe this is running pretty much the same software. There are some enhancements in the new one. Not enough that have made me interested to go out and buy the new hub. Um, this one here uh, falls into some of the same pitfalls, I think, as Vera, um, and that is some of the rules and some of the rules engine behind it uh, just didn't run and operate the way I thought they were supposed to. I would get weird behaviors where certain things would run and certain things wouldn't run on schedule. Um, even some things as simple as turning on and off a light bulb, it would seem to work, and then all of a sudden I would go in and the schedule would be cleared and, and it would be gone. I'm actually still using one of these uh, at my parents' house. They have it set up. They're doing some very, very basic light bulb on, light bulb off type thing. And even with them, they get some weird behavior when they have power failures and things like that where it just doesn't work. Almost seems like the time zone reset in it. Definitely some weird behavior there that just makes me feel that it's a little bit unreliable. Uh, the one nice thing about it, it is fairly user friendly. It's pretty simple. Uh, the only interface to it is through your smartphone. It's pretty intuitive. Um, like I said, it's something I set up for my parents, so I figured it would be easy for them to go in and manage the rules to turn their lights on and off at different times of the day. Uh, very simple rules engine. If what you're looking for is a very simple setup, not a bad option. Price point is pretty good, um, but again, would probably not want to be one of my top recommended solutions. Next one I have is uh, Insteon. So this is a device by a company called Smart Home. Well, actually, I think the company is actually called Insteon, but I believe either the parent or it's somehow affiliated with Smart Home. Um, this has been one that's been around for a while in many shapes and forms. Years ago, they had a, uh, a modem that would connect directly to your computer and they had software that would run it. Then they went to a USB-based modem. Uh, they've had various other controllers and finally I think within the last few years as, as everyone else has started coming out with hubs they came out with a hub as well. The big thing with Insteon is the device support. They have uh, Insteon devices which uh, they have a pretty good variety of devices. They have wired switches, they have plug-in modules, they have water sensors, all sorts of different things there. So there are some good options here. Um, I believe these are still compatible as well with X10 devices, which are some really old school style devices that use power line uh, communication. Um, definitely not the most reliable devices out there, but together um, this does make a good solution. So the biggest negative with the Insteon device is it's pretty much proprietary. So you're not gonna have this work with Zigbee, you're not gonna have this work with Z-Wave, you're not gonna have this work with Wi-Fi devices. Pretty much if it doesn't fall into the range of products, it's not gonna be a great option. They did have some support. I know it was sold at Microsoft stores and there were some partnerships with Microsoft for a while there. Um, and you do still see these around in big box stores sometimes. But again, unless you bought a lot of devices which are Insteon, I don't know if I'd be suggesting this to, one, to anyone. Now, this is probably my favorite solution right now for someone looking to buy something uh, kind of off the shelf and fairly simple. This is the Samsung SmartThings box. For those of you who don't know, SmartThings was a Kickstarter, came out a few years ago, made a pretty big splash with their Kickstarter campaign. Um, came out successful, products were late but delivered, was quickly purchased up by Samsung. Since then they've come out with this, which is the version 2 hub. I, I've also used the version 1 hub, almost identical. The version 2 actually adds uh, some battery backup. SmartThings works with a wide range of devices. You can use your Zigbee, your Z-Wave, uh, Wi-Fi based devices. All of them work right out of the box. 
um, does a really good job of it. I think if you were looking for something off the shelf that was going to do um, uh, basic to intermediate based uh, rules and home automation, this is actually a good option. It does have the ability to get a developer account or an API account where you can add a whole bunch of functionality. And the biggest problem with it is I find sometimes you're, you're jumping through hoops to make things work that should be really easy. And when that happens, you start to add in an element of unreliability because you really don't know what's not working when things don't go as planned. SmartThings really is one of the first devices that bridged the cloud to your local network. So all of your rules, all of the processing, all of the logic actually happens up in the cloud and the communication between the devices, the actual send an on command or I received an off command happen locally and they're transmitted up to the web. If the web is down, this box becomes essentially useless. Um, I just heard yesterday that uh, there's a leak online that SmartThings will be releasing a version three of this. Uh, rumor is that they'll be moving away from the SmartThing brand and it'll end up becoming part of the Samsung connected home brand. So I would say my biggest concern with this one right now is the uncertainty of what it is becoming and where it's gonna go. The final one that I have here is, um, is this. The solution I'm suggesting here is actually OpenHab. This is the one that I bring up in all my videos and a lot of people have said that uh, I'm, I'm advertising for them and I'm pushing them. And uh, yes on the pushing side, no on the advertising side. OpenHab is a completely open source platform. And what that means is essentially a group of developers, a group of people have come together with a similar interest in home automation. And they have developed a platform over the last years that is for home automation. Now, the difference with OpenHab is that everything within the system is open source, which means anyone who would like to can download all of the code, can look at it, can modify it, can change it, can understand how it works. Uh, everything is open. With all of these other systems I've shown you today, they're closed source, which means I don't know what's actually happening behind the scenes. Added security within OpenHab is it's open source, which means any developer can open up the code and see exactly what is happening. So the other great thing about OpenHab is because it's open, anyone can work with it. So if a new product comes out tomorrow, I use mine with Z-Wave, I use mine with Wi-Fi products, but if something brand new comes out tomorrow, all it takes is an interesting party to decide they want to make it work with OpenHab. So that could be the manufacturer of that product, that could be a developer who just happens to have bought one and decided he's going to make it work. And very often with open source software, that's how it happens. There are a lot of other, lot of other open source products out there. This one I feel has gotten to a level where it bridges the gap between uh, the average user who just wants to set it up, have a nice graphical interface, be able to go and do what they want to do, and the high-end hacker, scripter, programmer who wants to take it to a whole new level. I, I have another video linked here. If you want to take a look at that, that's, that's me setting up OpenHab in five minutes. From download to install on the computer, running through the initial setup, you can see the interface. It's super simple to do. And uh, really, one of the nice things about it is it runs on almost any platform. It would run on this, this little board I have here. It would run on a Raspberry Pi. It'll run on a Mac, a PC, a Linux computer, no problem. So those are a lineup of them today. Obviously, um, I think my top two solutions would be smart things. If you're looking for something simple to get up and running fast with basic to intermediate types rules and, and automation settings. And OpenHab would be the second one. Uh, for me, this is the preferred one just because I think it bridges both gaps. It allows you to have the beginner to intermediate setup and use it that way if you want. But if later on you decide you wanna expand more and you really wanna go into uncharted territories with your home automation, then this really lets you do that. I hope that was helpful. If you wanna see some more videos on smart things, let me know. If there's something very specific, put it in the comments. If you haven't already guys, subscribe, help my channel grow. Thumbs up if you liked the video. Comment if you've got something to say. And other than that, we'll see you back in the next video.